sailed in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is video tape number 16, Fear and Loathing in Cyberspace, the Art and Science of Enemy Profiling. Sucks, right? Um, I'm going to try to be a little more, but yeah, we're, we're concerned about some of the things that are happening the last couple weeks. So um, we actually we're going to speak on something else. Uh, DT was kind enough to let us change the subject the last minute. He was also kind. I haven't seen him um, uh, today, but uh, also thanks for getting us in today so that maybe we can generate some uh, dialogue on the subject. Uh, we were actually scheduled the last um, session on Sunday. I don't know how many of you are staying until then, but you might not have seen this. So I. I really appreciate that, uh, uh, Dark Tangent, wherever you are, and obviously uh, for holding the conference. Okay, I guess we're going to get started now. Um, and this, the subject today is fear and loathing in cyberspace, the art and science of enemy profiling. Jermaine, I heard there were some co comments in uh, some of the other sessions. Unfortunately, I didn't see them. Um, questioning uh, the utility enemy profiling, at least as it stands today. Um, I think that's good. We want to get a dialogue going. Um, so without further ado, Angus Blitter. Uh, I'm a hacker. Okay. Uh, my guidance counselor told me I could be wrong. Uh, I belong to a little computer club called HackSec Clan. Um, we pretty much were private. We're not uh, Certainly not releasing a lot of exploits. We keep a lot of that shit to ourselves. Um, however, uh, we are trying to involve in the community and uh, present some, uh, hopefully, uh, fun topics. And our topic today is profiling. That's what we're here to talk about. We're going to try to talk about uh, where it stands today uh, and hopefully where it can go in the future and what utility it can bring to bear. And I'm also here to solicit your help. Um, we're actually opening uh, some things up to the world, but I think it's the people in this room and people like you that we're really trying to reach um, because for various reasons you'll, you'll hear as we present. Okay, let's start off. Um, what is profiling what profiling is not? What it is. What it was. What it is. Classification system. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a classification system, much like you know when you identify somebody, oh, okay, they're a, a hermaphrodite or they're homosexual, heterosexual, those are characteristics. Um, they have blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, it's, a, it's a classification system, um, mollusks, things like that. So uh, that's its goal. That's what it is today. Um, there seems to be general consensus that it's something that's needed. Okay? At least people think they need it because they are spending lots of money with people uh, trying to develop it. And uh, this is a fact, and we can get you all the government research uh, solicitations that are out there to, to prove that. Um, we also believe that it's something that's needed. We believe currently anybody who is effectively using profiling is more of an artisan than a scientist. Okay? Um, I think there's a lot of us out there, if we're looking at log files, if we see our networks coming out of our attack or our probe, or if our phone's starting to click and we think somebody's listening to our calls, we actually go through an internal process of trying to classify um, you know, who, who this is. Um, anybody who's effective at it, it seems that it's more of an art. It's intuitive. You know, I know it's this guy that I you know, stole his girlfriend or uh, uh, you know, I wrecked his car. He hasn't forgiven me. So um, we go through that process. So there's some latent skills of available uh, to all of us there. What it is not, it's not a silver bullet. Like every uh, um, initiative out there, I think we've gone through, was it phase one, firewall mania? Uh, now there are appliances. Uh, was it last year's technology du jour uh, intrusion detection? Okay, how many went out and bought one? Okay, I downloaded it. Um, they're all looking for a silver bullet because as I think the uh, uh, session before uh, talked about, um, there's not enough education out there. The people that know this stuff really don't 
have uh, time or the patience to deal with some, some of the new uh, people that are coming online. And quite frankly, we don't think that the education out there is really up to snuff. So they look for a silver bullet, and it's shrink-wrapped on a shelf. We can buy it. Hey, let's do it. Let's order a million of them. It's not real time. And what we're going to talk about is the need for real time decision support. Okay? To me, profiling is a component of a total system. Uh, and it's only good for me uh, if it is in real time. Okay? Uh, I'm not really concerned about going out and arresting somebody uh, or taking retribution as much as making split decisions in real time to protect my assets. Protect my ass. Um, we want to turn it into more science. We really think it is not a science now. I'm sure there will be people that argue with me that and we'll open that up here for that. But I don't, I don't think that it is a science and we're striving to make it more of a science. Well, who's doing it? Everybody's doing it. There's been some things in, recently in the news that I'll talk about um, concerning New Jersey State Police. Anybody heard of this? Am I from the East Coast? And how they're doing using profiling techniques to pull people over? Lots of controversy. Um, we have some stuff that's going on right now. Um, Anybody live in uh, Colorado, that school shooting? And that's like, why didn't you know, you know, why didn't you stop this? Profiling, profiling. We've heard that a lot of different places. Um, you know, maybe those are fads, maybe that's something that's going to start happening, but we really see insurance companies, excuse me, insurance agencies, they're really good at it. You know, they can tell you what the percentage of, you know, plus or minus 5% when you're going to die. Possibly how you're going to die. Yeah, heart attack, you know. Um, they have to. That's their business. Um, credit card companies also, okay? Anybody had an experience where you tried to buy something outside of your normal buying patterns and you had to actually call? Okay? That's because you, can't, you got flagged in the computer. And it said, hey, this is out of this person's buying profile. We should be concerned, especially since it's a monetary value above, you know, what we would like to lose, which credit card companies and banks don't want to lose any money. Airlines. This is one that's been in the news lately, um, especially uh, with the uh, second wave. I came up through the Reagan era, dr war on drugs, now we're in a war on information, or, um, actually uh, uh, rights, I think. We want to take all our rights away. Uh, the airlines <coughs> are engaging in profiling for terrorism. At least that's what they're saying. Uh, they know people come up and pay with cash, buy their ticket that last checking um, odd size packages. Um, they want more of this, and they're spending lots of money. If you want to know who's doing what and, and who's really dedicated to it, any public companies or any government companies through the Freedom of Information Act, find out where they're spending their money. That's the key. If you want to know what the next big technology push is going to be in the security realm, look at the government solicitations for research. You will see it. Intrusion detection, firewalls, all that stuff is, are in those documents. And they're usually typically a year or two years um, ahead of schedule. And you figure if you develop it, you'll have a ready uh, customer. Vertical, financial verticals, banks. Banks like to do profiling, um, and also uh, trading companies like to do profiling because they use that information to try to ascertain where they should put their investments. Um, criminal psychologists or forensic science, uh, a la Hannibal Lecter. Um, these are the guys that try to go out and uh, catch, um, uh, figure out who the next victim is going to be uh, in a mass murder or some kind of serial killer. Uh, also, in forensic science, sciences, we collect evidence and try to figure out, uh, you know, what's this, the MO, what's the profile of this, uh, this individual so that we can predict their behavior. And most government agencies um, engage in uh, profiling of some kind. IRS. Obviously, uh, they're looking for abnormalities or anomalies in your um, income and spending habits. Um, I think the CIA also um, uh, deals in it um, from a classification system. You see a lot of these government... Is anybody taking one of those psychological tests um, to figure out if you are going to become an enemy of the state or you know, hack your family up? Okay. Uh, very bizarre. Uh, very bizarre questions. Like they, they, there's no right answer. They give you something like um, uh, you have the option of running over a dog or hitting a pedestrian. What do you do? Okay. Well, I guess there is a right answer for that, but I won't tell you what my answer is. <laughs> so it looks like we have people who are doing this. Okay. The credit card companies are still making money. The airlines are still making money. So maybe it's working for them. It's certainly not going to put them out of business. So there must be somebody of work that exists, and there must be some technologies that are being used. 
So what's the problem? Well, <clears throat> there's lots of theories. I'm going to introduce some new ones here today. That might be part of the problem. There's all theories. Very few of these things are being discussed openly and, and you know, um, uh, dissecting it and, and finding out if it's truly valid. We don't have much data. Okay, there's no raw data in my collection uh, that is substantial enough to show trends. Um, think of all the people that are doing it. Airlines, lots of travelers, um, credit card companies, lots of transactions. They have the raw data. So they have been able to develop some logic to, to go against it. Um, but there's no publicly available data. It's proprietary and or it's cloistered research. Um, this is a competitive edge, especially in those commercial um, ventures. This is your family style kung fu. This is the stuff you don't want to give up. Um, that's a lot of it. The other reason is the research is very expensive. Um, and that can pose some problems, especially if you're on a limited budget, which we are, by the way. <laughs> There's no common methodology. When we talk about it being more of an art form than a science, that's really what we're getting to. Um, you know, there's some trends that you'll see in all these profiling activities, but uh, to my knowledge, there is no true common methodology. And if there is, please turn me on to it because I'd love to read it. And there's no feedback loop. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the methodology in that when you learn something, again, if it's family style, it stays in the house and you know it. But how does that get fed back out there so that other people can look at it and tell you where it's right and where it's wrong, where it needs to be fixed? So this feedback loop does not exist, and I think we need that. To give you a little idea why I'm up here talking to you about this in the first place, I'll give you some background on, on me. Um, <clears throat> I have, a, I have a day job, I moonlight as a consultant, and for like the last year and a half, um, I've been dealing with some new issues in enterprise security. The, the, the reason I started doing this was, we went through all those phases, we sold everybody a firewall, everybody in the brother several firewalls. Um, we also sold them intrusion detection, lots of it, scanning products, lots of services, all that fun stuff. Education, and what I'm finding is that there's still there is still what are, you, what are you doing now? There's still a problem. Um, why aren't we secure? We got all this technology. We're spending all this money. Why doesn't it work? Well, people aren't using it correctly. That's certainly uh, one reason. Um, and I think it's it comes down. The gentleman said um, that one of the biggest problems uh, with security, in his mind, uh, was ignorance. Uh, I would say there's two. It's ignorance and laziness. Okay. Uh, the only way you're going to get people to stop being lazy, you can't stop people from being ignorant. You can train them all you want, but uh, you know, uh, but you can stop people from being lazy by making it their job not to be. Um, and that's what's not happening. So they got all the technology. Maybe some of them have skills. They can certainly pay for the skills, um, but they still have an issue. Still have a problem. The approach that we came up with, simple is better. Get back to the basics. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you can get to a, let's say, 90% security, comfortable security, acceptable level of risk, whatever you want to call it, without spending a lot of money or any money. Back to the basics, okay? Um, what would some of the basics be? Don't run services that you don't understand or you don't need, okay? Log everything. These basic things that I think many people in this, this room, especially if you've been through any 101 security class, you've heard it over and over and over again. In reality, are those very simple concepts being executed? My experience has been no. Okay, so we gotta get back to, back to basics and a common sense approach to enterprise security. Hmm, what else? Well, we were developing some things for proactive computer forensics. Now, this was a, what our talk was originally going to be about, uh, but we decided to actually swip, uh, change the subject matter. Um, but a lot of the research for this project came out of the proactive forensics. And I, th I think if, again, if you're looking out there and you're seeing what presentations are being made, computer forensics will probably be the big business after year 2K. Um, the sheer amount of litigation that's going to be derived from that will definitely point out that uh, there is a shortest shortage of competent and or certified computer forensics technicians. Okay, everybody remember the OJ trial? Okay, remember all the loopholes that were opened up just because they hadn't maintained chain of evidence? All right. 
So in that vein, what we did was we looked at the firm approach. Notice it's trademarked, okay? All this stuff is, is there to, because it's, it's a real, real product. Um, and this firm approach appealed to us. What we have here is a typical uh, mock-up of uh, somebody's network. We got a bad guy there, the world of threats, um, going through the internet, coming out to your publicly untrusted network, and um, doing bad things. This rig setup here that we have, um, we'll see the database. We'll talk about each of these components. You see the database, you see consolidated screen, you see some sane servers. Um, this is an enterprise environment, okay? And when enterprise environment is a fancy way of saying you got a lot of different computers, different OSs, and they're geographically dispersed. Oh, and, and uh, you have an IT budget. So, consolidated security console, what is this? Well, um, similar to HP OpenView or any of the network management stations, this is, let me also tell you, this is all vendor neutral stuff. So what, when I'm throwing these terms out here, I'm trying to get some verbiage together so that we have a common uh, lingo. So, lingo. So, so the CSC is basically where all the information, all your decision support comes into one room. Um, like war rooms, okay? Well, my war room is only staffed with one individual, or if somebody's over, there's two of us. Um, so I need this consolidated screen. I need a place where I can look in one window and get instant feedback to what's going on in my environment. That's what the consolidated security console is all about. Now, you'll see a lot of vendors doing this stuff. Um, I think uh, Checkpoint, uh, their network management concept. I know HP OpenView is looking to put security components. Um, and they should be easily plugged in, right? Because they you know, adhere to certain open standards. We then have data collection points. Data collection points or data control points, again, a generic term. Basically, these are elements of a network that can either collect information um, and get it to wherever it needs to be processed, uh, or it can be a choke point. It can control um, that portion of the network. So uh, examples would be firewalls. Okay, firewalls, well, how do they get their information back? They can do proprietary methods or log files. Simple is better. Log files are very good, folks. Everybody should log. Um, <clears throat> routers, syslog demons, gateways, other applications, uh, intrusion detection devices. I mean, those are all be considered data collection points. And I'm sure you could think of others. Then it comes to the heart and soul of this thing, ORB. Now, ORB uh, is an object repository base. It's a database, okay? It doesn't have to be SQL, it doesn't have to be scalable, it can be friggin' flat files, all right? It's just a place where we're putting all the raw data. And uh, we got some animation here. Right. Well, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna create your own or uh, your own database. It's gonna have signatures in there, uh, constructs, at attack signatures, uh, exploits. It's gonna have uh, reference material, Pretty much as much information as you can get about whatever your network is and whatever your, your concerns are. And we get them in this big database. Now that we have the database, we can actually start doing some things to the data. So we have discovery engines, okay? And I'm, I'm using engines and objects and all that stuff. Um, you know, because it makes it look more like you know, a real product. Contains the query and routines and logic objects. Basically what this allows us to do is query the back end system and also shop jobs to our object broker. You may not have in-house capabilities to do the exact process that you want on this raw data. So what you can do is, when it's, since it's all object oriented, we can go to an object broker and it can go out there and find somebody that can do it for me or other people can write objects that can be utilized by this system. And we have a response engine. I thought there was also some discussion about, you know, attacking your enemy. And is that okay? I can tell you for a fact, if you download this white paper, there is a quote from Louis Frisch, uh, French Frisch? FBI guy, and he um, <clears throat> basically talks about how everybody that's coming out of training is being issued a gun, a badge, and a laptop, and that uh, they they will in certain uh, situations, uh, you know, under government uh, uh, presidential directive, they will actually uh, attack another network. They have no problem doing that. Uh, civilians, however, are not allowed to do that. 
depends on the state you're in. I think Michigan has a pretty liberal law. And then we have the object broker or logic. <clears throat> if, if we don't have in-house capabilities to process the data stored in our in-house orb, we can actually broker those transactions out, out of the system, or to subsystems, more protected systems in-house. All right. Well, that's the pitch for a firm, um, and that's my day job. But it really led up to us to be able to develop this. Uh, HackSec wanted to develop. I go to HackSec a lot to, to find out if my ideas, you know, if they're crazy, can we do this? They said they thought we could put something together. And at that time, we hadn't decided what we were going to do, and then I saw this. Um, this is a snippet of the manifesto uh, that JP um, put out where he basically states that he is changing his directive, and um, I'm not sure what, he, what it was all about, but the thing that struck to me was that he was talking about profiling. And I know that he has this database that's 33,000 whatever entries, and I know that uh, it's only for the elite government people that pay him for that access. Um, so I was a little bit concerned that there's a lot of smoke and mirrors and not enough open science um, involved in this. So we felt that this was the way to go. Um, we also thought we could come up with some cool names and graphics to make it look good. So. <clears throat> Profiling. We wanted to give a new profiling definition, all right? Um, I'm going to read this verbatim because I, I had to go for a couple times. Profiling. The act of profiling is concerned with the collection and analysis of empirical data. Okay? These would be those object properties or characteristics that we were talking about. The desired result of this activity is to produce decision support capabilities. You want to be able to predict behavior. Okay? That's our definition. Um, so going along with that, what does this affirm approach, and I, I didn't give you the acronym for affirm. Uh, do you guys want it? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see if I remember it. Uh, the other thing here, we had actually, um, we've had some problems getting this out. We've had two attempts to stop this. Um, anybody who wants to talk about that offline, buy me a beer and I'll tell you the whole sordid story. Uh, but we had to change the name at the last minute. So we changed it to affirm. We think we came up with a better name, but it stands for active forensics intelligent response method okay and it's a total methodology it's a theory um, but we have been actually using it in the field keep it simple that's one of the predicate that uh, mandates for a firm got to keep this simple all right the more difficult it is more complicated the more likely it is to get screwed up we must be able to provide some continuing support for it, okay? If we go and find something that's great and it dies on the vine, and support is resources, it's going out, talking to people about, get them excited about it. Must have multiple or varied information sources, okay? This is so important. If you take, make all your decisions based on single source information, okay, you're gonna fail, you're gonna have problems. That's how you verify. Trust no one, verify everything. It must provide modular logic. And when I talk about modular logic, um, that's just a fancy, anybody heard the term mobile code? Okay, it's really object, part of object brokering, and it's the fact that, you know, we're not gonna have everything in house, so we have to have the ability to, to bring in other uh, logic, and we use that term modular logic. We can also export our logic. So if you need some help, we can ship you an object that can do it. And we must also have a system for rating and purging the information and its sources, okay? All right, now we're ready to get to the good stuff. The key uh, success factors of the challenge, what's going on? I don't have the raw data, guys, okay? Um, the data that we have in-house uh, was never collected to be put into a system like this, so we don't have a database. We need one. We also don't really have any field proven logic. Um, we've got some things that, that look good with our limited database, but we haven't had a chance to really you know, run them through a ringer and develop the, the logic and the algorithms. So that's an issue. Okay, well, am I crazy? Getting up here and talking to you all guys about this? Uh, maybe. Uh, I gotta design a classification system. Okay, maybe, I, maybe we can do that. 
I got to create a user interface. Well, that was the least of our worries because we've got IM12 that does all our uh, graphics for us, and he's really good. So we knew he'd come up with something cool. And we have to populate the database. Now this becomes a problem. You know, I got a mortgage and a wife, and it's you know difficult to do projects like this, especially when you have to build a large database and you don't have a lot of resources. So that was probably my biggest concern. You have to evaluate the logic and the algorithms, okay? This is stuff that we do day to day, so this wasn't such a big deal. And we also were assuming that we were gonna get some help from other people. Um, there are lots of good research on statistical modeling and things like that, so uh, we have access to those. Um, and actually, we'd like to talk to anybody that, that has some of those when this is over. And we must be prepared to defend the methodology and approach, okay? I'm ready to do that. Um, and anybody that's doing profiling today, um, we can we can talk about it. If we have things that we agree on, fine. If we disagree, uh, we can do it in a public forum. I have no problem with that. Okay, here we go. So where did I start? Dungeons and Dragons. I went back to the roots. Um, what? AD&D character sheets. All right. Oh, I'm dating myself. Actually, it was just D&D or, or chain mail uh, back then. It met all the requirements. Simple. Let's think outside the box. Required very little tweaking. Okay, remember, classification system. That was the first thing I had to come up with. Provides a common point of reference. Anybody that's ever played D&D or any war games or any of the newer games where you have the heads up and all your stats on one side, okay? Provided inspiration for a user interface, okay? We didn't need to, to worry about the layout because it had been evolved over a period of time. Now, from the gameplay side of things, all objects interact according to rules. Think about it. You know you got your fifth level paladin, you know he's got his singing sword, and when he sees a hobgoblin, you know kind of how he's going to react. Um, and you can throw that into an algorithm, roll your random numbers, and you know how the outcome's going to happen based on the rules. The DM is the tiebreaker. Now that's what we're going to get to because what we're basically doing is decision support. So you're at your consolidated screen, you need to make a decision, you punch up the stuff and you come back and it gives you something, a probability of 50%. What am I going to do? Well, at that point you're still utilizing the art. Okay? But hopefully you're making a much more informed decision. So we went from this, character data sheets, which define the character object property so well, to this. This is um, a screen, it's an actual screen from the web page that we put up. It should be up, hopefully it's not, uh, um, we did it before we left. And we're introducing Project Profiler, okay? This is an internet experiment. experiment. Effectively what we've done is we put up a web page and we are soliciting people to come in and fill our database up. We want to know about certain types, um, characters. I want to know who are the, the mages, who are the newbies. We've got a whole system. You can go through it and look at it. We're going to execute this experiment uh, in three phases. And we'll talk about those phases. We're going to make it open. It's extensible because of the way we've designed it is scalable. Um, and it's free. Okay, I think that's the most important thing. I think that the open and the free are the most important thing because that is the only way we're going to find out if, uh, in fact, this is something that we should be doing. Project Profiler, phase one, we have to build the database. Okay, that's where you guys come in. Uh, the page is up there. We want people to come in, fill the database up. Uh, we're going to open up for questions. I know there's going to be a lot of questions about, I think the database will, will generate the most questions. Um, for 30 days, we're going to leave this thing open. Now, if they're going to get any hits and nobody fills in the databases, we can't really go to phase two. So it's very important that we, we get this, um, this support, um, hopefully from this community uh, especially. Then we go public with the database. All right? And this is where everybody that's participated gets to access the database and pull up information. And in phase three, we have to refine the profiling logic. That's going to be a very important part of this process. A little more detail. Phase one, if you go to the web page, I've got flyers. We're using profiler.com. Uh, it's got a zero yeah. instead of an O. <clears throat> phase one, we'll populate this database. 
Phase two, 30 days later, we're going to open up the database for live queries. Now, because of the algorithms that we're trying to develop and, and you know, rate and make sure that they're better, we are going to implement an update capability into it. Quite frankly, we're not sure exactly how we're going to do that. Obviously, I think the thing that comes to mind is you're going to have a lot of people putting bogus data in your database. Well, this is true. We, we think we yeah we think we figured a way to to purge that and rate it, um, and part of that is going to require update capabilities. So when you see something in there that you know is not right, update it, change it, and then phase three, we're going to introduce publicly the, some of the algorithms that we're using. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about this, and again, this is the real theoretical part, um, but I, we've been talking about it and we think it, it, it makes sense. Six degrees of separation, never played that game, the Kevin Bacon thing? Um, I also feel that there's six degrees of separation between pretty much any of the enemies that are wired. Um, and I, I def enemy is enemy, okay? I'm not taking white hat, black hat, um, enemy is an enemy. Six percent of degree of separation says that everybody's going to kind of know each other and if you can tr track people back through that web of um, um, connect, connect, web of deceit, you will be able to, uh, to find connections. Now, there's an interesting, uh, is it the sex list? The sex chart. The sex chart. I don't know how many of you people have seen the sex chart. How many people are on the sex chart? How many, yes, how many of you in this room are on that chart? Um, <laughs> We're going we're to out every single one of you here. But the, the thing is, what it, it's, it's, a, it's a chart that basically shows everybody who's had sex with each other, right? And it's this huge, long scroll that's version... Uh, I think it's like 9 something now. Version 9X. Yes, it's, it's crazy. But that's what six degrees of separation is. By building profiles or uh, um, an orb or uh, data that knows who knows who in what context, it might be possible to ascertain very valuable information about who you're doing, even though you don't see them doing it directly. Who are you dealing with? Um, profile, yeah, who are you doing? But the sex list is all in mind. We, we do a lot of this with, uh, when we track down um, uh, bank transfers, okay? They go through many different uh, laundering points before they actually get to where they're going. Um, that's a method that is commonly used. Associates. Oh, oh, no, here's the one. You ever seen any of the good um, mafia movies where the feds are all in the room, they've got all the pictures of the family, and they've got the, the, the head boss and all his underlings and everything like that, and then there's blank pictures? We'd be looking to try to identify who the blank pictures are based on all of their associates. That's one of the theories that we're going to try to put into play, and that'll be in there in the first queries. The reason we're not showing you any of the algorithms for this right now, they're very sketchy, and quite frankly, we would be embarrassed to have you guys look at it. But we will have something for, for everybody to see after the, 30, uh, after the next 30 days, which will be the queries. Maybe before. We don't know yet. There's also the black hole theory. And the black hole theory is this. We have a lot of people that are making decisions based on th publicly available information. Okay? We all know that uh, uh, we can easily be manipulated. The truth can be uh, fine-tuned, spin doctors and all that stuff. So how do you really find those elusive spooks, um, the ones, the dangerous ones, okay? The, maybe the professionals that are no longer part of the Soviet Union. I mean, we spent a lot of money um, bringing in their nuclear scientists because we were worried about dirty bombs, but we really didn't do anything about their intelligence agencies, um, and I think we're seeing some of the, that problem right now. So there are hired guns out there. These type of data mercenaries are spooks, okay? They're not script kiddies. They're probably not at at this convention, if they are at this convention, they're working at the hotel as a, as a waiter or something, um, because they do this, you know, for whatever reasons. How do you detect something that you can't see, that's invisible? The black hole theory. How do people detect black holes? It's not that you can detect the hole itself, but you can detect how it affects the things around it. So this, in some respect, is related to six degrees of separation, however, um, it is, it's, it's a different application. Anybody seen the program Faces? Anybody ever watch uh, America's Most Wanted? 
Well, this face is program is pretty cool. It's it's um, it's got a bunch of ears, a bunch of hair, a bunch of eyes, and when people are trying to figure out who assaulted them, uh, they can actually pick components out and build a face. So it's a lot less expensive um, and easier than traditional um, artists. We're going to add some of that. We would like to be able to take an object characteristic of, say, um, I don't know, uh, you know. A, a, You'll, you'll see some of the names out there, but I would say, uh, let's take, um, he's a bad guy, he's a professional, we're not sure if he's a he even, um, but we do know, know certain things about him. And be able to take these objects and drop them in and create a baseline profile of this individual or this type of individual. And that really was inspired by faces, um, so I wanted to give them props on that. Alternative information sources. We need to develop it. Okay. Um, I know some of the guys in my crew will certainly agree. Uh, coming out of front door of any network, we do some vulnerability testing. That's such a pain. Why do it? They, that's where they spend all their money at the front door. Alternative information sources. Go read somebody's um, uh, corporate profile in the annual report. Lots of good information there. Look for information in places that you normally wouldn't. Uh, it's very interesting to, to listen. Anybody listen to the BBC? Okay. Listen to BBC and then listen to one of the other major news uh, or, um, outlets and how different the stories are. Okay. I think you can develop a lot of inf valuable information by getting two stories that are very different. And we get this hybrid and maybe that's, you know, those two stories somewhere in the middle is where the truth lies. So uh, we want to develop those. We're also going to practice... Full disclosure, and I, so when I say full disclosure, I, I mean it in the truest sense of the words. Um, so here it goes. It might not work. This might be all a bunch of bullshit. Okay, I may be full. Of I may be crazy. We don't intend to regulate the use. Okay, this has some of <clears throat> some of my. Uh, daytime people that I deal with a little concerned. Uh, it possibly has something to do with why we've had some delays in this, but um, we're not going to regulate the use. We're not, we don't feel that the internet community, specifically you folks, would participate if we would put censorship on it. So that's one of the things, good or bad. And we do plan to develop some commercial code based out of this. Not from the database, but from the algorithms, because that's where the money's at. Um, and that's where we want to be. We also, since it's going to be open, we anticipate, hope, if it's embraced, that other people will be able to develop this modular mobile logic that can plug into the system. Okay, in conclusion, <coughs> Regardless if this particular project works, we know that people are going to still go out and look for a silver bullet. We're hoping to add, you know, our two cents. We're hoping to open this up. Don't, it, there's no reason this stuff needs to be hidden. It's, it's the same thing with encryption, okay? Would you trust an encryption algorithm that you didn't see the math to it, okay? PKI, that math, it makes my head hurt, all right? But I know a couple guys that are really good at it. And if I'm going to use something, I have them look at it, and I trust them. Um, it has to be open. I don't know what some of the other people are doing. We're going to try to open all our research. Uh, and we need your help. This will not work without your participation. And we'd like you to, you know, at least give it a try. And that's it, folks. So I guess we're going to open it up. Uh, we've got uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Questions, comments? Um, you said that most of the questions would be about the what sort of information are you asking for? What system? Like, are you interested in information about ourselves? Are you interested in information about people that you know about? And what <laughs> What's that? Okay. The, the question is, um, it was related to the database, and I didn't hear it all, sorry. Okay. Right. Are we looking about personal information 
Right. We, we are not necessarily looking for names and addresses of people. When we talked about this, we said, well, you know, that's what our own personal database is like. Don't we need that? No, we're looking for more because JP's database looks like that. That's been his big claim to fame, that he knows all of us. He knows where we live and our, our real names and all that. Um, that doesn't help decision support. If I'm going to come and arrest you, that might help me. If I'm going to set you up and have your, your systems knocked offline, you know, that gives me leverage. But in decision support capabilities, um, knowing exactly who you are can help, but I'm more interested in your capabilities. So when we look at the form of the information that we're taking, we're, we're trying to get a feel for the person that's entering the information is going to give us their capabilities, some of their nicks, uh, known aliases. Uh, we look for a real name, but we don't go for social security numbers. We're not going for any of that because it's not really germane. What we're trying to do is develop this logic um, that, that allows us to make good decisions. Um, we did get some comments on, I'm not giving you any data. Why would I tell you anything about myself? And we think many people won't tell about themselves, but they would love to tell about somebody else. So we think that the database will get populated. If for no other reason, people ratting each other out. Did that answer your question? Also, are you uh, interested in technical information in a way of like a uh, system boss? Like if you find a way to parse like, okay, somebody hit my boss and say, and that, and then they did this. Okay, that... Five techniques. Right, 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 right. That is, that is a, a, a bigger goal for the firm. Um, methodology itself. I mean, that's something that, that we're trying to get put in there. Um, for this particular profiling, we will list capabilities um, and we will try to look at um, personality traits. There's a couple computer programs that will take a regular piece of text and they will write it in the, um, uh, the style of, say, a Shakespeare. Okay? So we are going to be looking for things like that, but that's not um, really part of the uh, profiler project. Uh, over here on the end. Um, that, that we're reliable people to be judgmental? You don't. You're just going to have to trust us. No, um, you, you don't. That's one of the problems that we're going to have. We, we feel we're going to have with data collection. Good. Yes. Correct. We, and that's one of the reasons that we. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, the, the question. Uh, the question is, how do you know that the information sources that you're getting are correct? How do we verify that our data is correct? That's a good question. Thank you. That is where this refining process comes in. We're going to look at. We're not going to require that you give us a name or a handle to who submits, but we are going to ask for it. So. Over a period of time, we're going to have empirical data to find out how good your information is. If you're giving us crap information all the time, we're going to do it. It's statistical modeling. We're going to we're going to weight your information at a at a negative. You have bad information. Um, you can still submit information, but you're not going to have a high rating on yours, and it'll probably get lost in the numbers. Now, that's the process that's going to happen over that thir first 30 days. Just because we haven't opened up the database in those first 30 days doesn't mean that we're not doing something. We're going to be looking for ways to do that. And most of the data, when you look on the queries, will have a plus or minus rating. Okay? And that'll try to put out there, what's our margin of error? So we're, that is a big challenge, and that's where we think, you know, hopefully if people get involved, we're going to get some real good out here. It's an eBay thing. <laughs> um, you, sorry. Um, first of all, the FBI has an uh, actual model of a uh, worksheet that is released for the Thank you. 
Yeah, we, we think motivation will come out of some of the classes. That was, I'm sorry. The question, the question was, are we going to try to track what motivates the attacker? Um, we think that is an important characteristic to be able to predict what their next move will be. Um, so yes, we are going to attempt to, uh, to, to gauge that and, and track it and, put, and expose that. Um, that really comes in some of, some of the classification types. Um, you go back to D and D, you know, fighters. Terrorism essentially breaks down into either power or anger. And if it's you know, one of those if you're doing it with powers, that's one useful thing. But if you're doing it out of pure anger, out of the deal company, that's not. Right. I, I, let me go also say that I did not look at any of the FBI research. I really, this is something that came out of, and that's why it might be all bunk. But I, I just, I think people are motivations are a little more sophisticated than a yes or no. I said, and, certainly, uh, we're we're going to attempt to try to to, uh, to gauge that. Um, any anybody has suggestions on it, definitely see me offline or send us email because we're we're going to try to incorporate all of that in. Um, I'll get you in a minute. Yep. A second way of looking at this, which I think is totally different from what it's, it sounds like what you're talking about, setting up a database package and saying, okay, this looks like maybe it was hacker X. I don't, I think what you need to say is set up a database that says, or a logic that says, this looks like this is type hacker type X. This next attack will probably be that part of this because this is a toolkit. Or no, this kid is already in the database, now he's going to try to move to the firewall. He's trying to get network access for insider trading. If you're looking into the real profiling is he's a serial killer, he attacks white women, he rapes and kills them. Okay, so now let's look for white women. Let's right. find out who he was. Let's, you know, base, I think the question is that case would be different. What's your normal course of attack? I don't care what this is. Right. right. What's your level? How long have you been doing it? What kind of companies are you attacking? Is it just a little bit more? Is it age or base? Are you trying to make money? I think that once you generate that kind of database where it doesn't matter the person that you can just, because anticipation, you're not going to try to rest with it. You don't care what I am. You just want to know how to stop me. So you need to know what my next step is. Correct. I want to predict your, your next logical behavior, or at least the, the best percentage of that. And, and maybe I haven't articulated it correctly. That is that is exactly what we're trying to do. We are not trying to create this all-knowing database of your, you know, the the person. Because, let's let's face it. We're not going to have a very big database, and we're going to spend a lot of time going after information that does not affect real-time decision support capabilities. Yeah, I see an attack. It's coming from multiple sources. It's using the in-map, uh, or I see some net bot, net bus ports. Um, I I know what the next thing they're going to do. They're going to they're going to try to get deeper in there, violate some more trust. I want to be able to predict what the next move is so that either I can, you know, hopefully stop them uh, or, you know, um, it, it does have application for law enforcement too, I imagine, or, but uh, real time, just stop them from, from doing whatever they're doing. Stay away from my data. Um, I promised him for... Uh, quick, quick question. Uh, on, on the database, are you taking some of the background information as well, like the web browser types that you're using when they go to the website? <laughs> Okay, everybody uh, that hits any of our sites, part of full disclosure, we do something like that. Anybody ever see uh, Tattoo Man's uh, little, all the flags and that one page with the last hundred hits? Okay, we do something similar. Um, it's standard logging procedure. We are not planning on putting that into the database. Uh, we could, if I mean, we think that we want to do that. But we're trying to... Um <laughs> Well, are we talking about the people that are submitting the information? Yeah. Or, okay, if you submit the information, and we went round and round about this, we would like an email address or a handle. Um, but we are not going to take what we do for logging and incorporate that into the database. Now, we probably should because that's going to help us on our, our uh, credibility rating for that. Oh, well that person, you know, we seem like we get a lot of crazy hits from, you know, Southern California and their information is just, you know, uh, really too concerned with UFOs. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it would be valuable information. We're not going to include it. We're, we're worried about some of the questions I haven't heard yet are about privacy information, who owns the database, what happens when you spit out a report, is it copyright? I mean, those, to me, those, the science, the math, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. I'm more worried about legally somebody coming and shutting us down. Because I guarantee you, 
there, this is something that they, people do not want everybody to have access to. And it's not, it's not the government, it's corporations mainly because, you know, they can't charge you for it. Uh, question. We not by much. We, um, in a previous life, we did a lot of lottery statistics software, and we sold a lot of them. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody ever won the lottery, but we did pretty well with it. But some of those, the, it's, it's, it's statistical modeling is what it is. And so we have actually are recruiting people that are doing this kind of research um, outside of you know what we think the security realm. We're going to Wall Street. Uh, we're getting some of those guys that can slice and dice and you know having to make their living on a fraction of a cent. Uh, we think they might be good at this. Uh, we also are going to some of the universities. Now, when I mentioned I had not done any research on the profiling aspect, I have done lots of research on neural networks, statistical modeling, and there is a wealth of information out of there. Um, uh, it's out there. We have to collect it. Hopefully, somebody will bring some of that forward. But we're going to use those same tools. We could. <laughs> They depend on a real large data set, and we also. And the, and the form that we're, we're trying to fill out right now, we hopefully, you know, maybe we'll get comments to say, hey, you should be looking for this, you should be looking for that. We're going to try to incorporate that into the system too. That's why one of the reasons, if we were to take a year and budget this thing, we could probably build it. It would be very expensive. It would never be as good as if we actually get the internet community to come on and, and start working with it. At, at least the internet hacking scene, security scene. We, I, we think those individuals will be uh, very useful. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, question? Okay, um, let, me, let me just, I'm going to have to ask you this, this question too. And the first question, um, are we, are we going to be logging what people are looking at um, and the kind of questions that they're asking the database and the queries? Yes. But in the same lines, um, that's almost, <laughs> we have to, and that goes back to the credibility rating, uh, but that information will not be publicly queryable. See, some of this stuff stays kind of as proprietary to the database. And this database, if this thing works, um, this database isn't the end-all database. This database is only being used to fine-tune the algorithms. The only database that's going to be any good is the one that's in your environment, right? Who's attacking my network? Who's visiting me? Who's, you know, what, you, your database, your internal database will be totally different than this external database. But you'll be able to use the same logic objects. And let's say that you develop an object, and I need that. This system should allow me to go out and shop for that object and use it to, against my database. And that way, I don't have to let the database out, but I can bring the logic in and apply it to that. And because of this consolidated security console concept, the end user or the decision support person doesn't have to know what's going on in the background. If it's not in-house, the system will know enough to go and talk to a trusted information resource of some kind um, and retrieve that um, those algorithms, those objects. Your second question. My second question would be You're doing okay, you're you're looking for distance support. Okay, um, I can always say that at this phase in the game, phase one, uh, we will not be allowing that information, who's coming to query, um, to be publicly available. Um, we will have to look at it, uh, again, like I said, to rate our information sources. Now, that assumes that somebody's given us a handle or a name. Again, since we're not auth verifying authenticity of our users, there's some, some fuzzy logic you know, involved in that, too. Oh, uh, yes. Well, we uh, we 
we think that will, that will possibly be uh, environmentally influenced. Um, I, when, I, when I'm sitting on my deck, I normally have radio going in the background, several television shows. You know, it's not all consolidated, but I'm getting information from all these sources. When somebody, um, when I look at something, I see something I haven't some, see, seen before, or uh, we, we're actually getting attacked by the root, ser root servers, you know, then you probably say, oh, we're being DOS because I don't have any beef with the root servers, but you still check it out. Um, that's going to evolve, I think. Um, there are certainly things that I... I think some of the search engines are really nice. Put in searches. To me, that would be an alternate um, uh, information source. We also have some tools that have been developed um, commercially for some other folks that we've had access to. Um, this is, I'll tell you one of them, it's, bull, it's called Bullseye. And this thing is like a mega search tool. And we've, we've been using it. And what it does is it skims the undernet. Um, everybody knows the HTTP sites. Some people are using FTP. There's a lots of other services out there that aren't being utilized and we feel that that's probably the first the, the low-hanging fruit that's where we'll go for and we're, we're, we're probably we're going to see if these guys are going to give us some of their, their logic to at least put it in um, maybe like donate something to us some source code <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it might not be the best business decision, but um, this might sound corny. A lot of this has to do with principle. Uh, you know, I, at daytime I'm a consultant. Um, I consider my, myself. Well, yeah, the, the question is, if, from a commercial standpoint, um, we understand that you want the algorithms, but that big database is something too. Well, I don't. you get the database automatically because it's public. The only true value that's going to come out of it, you're going to have to develop your own database. Because ultimately this is to, why, why are we doing this? Decision support, so you can protect your own information infrastructure. Your database that you create in-house will be more crucial later in the process. And initially, you'll be doing a lot of queries to the public database. Once you start building your own uh, in-house talent, that's what's going to be valuable. And that'll be your proprietary database. If, I, if we go down the line in six months from now, we have this great pet project, and I go, public access to the database is closed. Okay? I've lost all credibility. And, you know, I, I definitely don't want to do that. Um, I can't afford it. In this business, everybody knows each other. Uh, your credibility is everything. So, um, it's very tempting. And this is part of the issues that we're getting um, with people not wanting us to go forward with this. The other problem is with with not maintaining the database ourselves, we um, uh, we lose control of its integrity. So we feel it's at least in the beginning stages. But we even if there's a pay service that comes out of accessing the database for like corporate customers, um, we feel that it'll have to maintain a public database, even if if it's pay for view for certain entities. Uh, I'm oh, sorry, back here, question, you, yes, sorry. <laughs> Yep. That, no, no, no. That, that's what could be used for this. Yeah. Remember when I said I'm not going to regulate the use of the database or the tools? Um, you know, that's that that is a real problem. But you know what? That problem that that is an HR problem is a legal problem. Nothing to do with technology. And you've got that problem right now because guess what? All those files are electronic, and you don't think people go through that? What do you, what's your HR person do? They, they're working so hard that they don't have time to flip through the files, especially with people that alienate them or upset them. Yeah, we, we know, we've dealt with people like that before. But no, that's a valid concern, and we, we've had discussions about that. Uh, quite frankly, it's not our problem. <laughs>
Yep. Yep. Especially if they have your DNA in there and they, they know that your family's prone to some critical disease and you, you're going to die and deny you insurance. These, this is the problem with data, but that's not going to make the problem go away. Um, but awareness will, so definitely um, that, that's an issue. I know we're getting uh, we're, we're a little bit uh, over on time. I said, one more question. Uh, going back to the summit, just a little bit earlier, uh, uh, you can tell me that you want to go over to that. Are you going to be able to do that? Are you going to be able to do that? <laughs> That's a little bit bigger and it starts getting into a conflict of interest because uh, my company is, is the one that put together a firm and we are marking that and we're trying to do that. So Profiler does not do that, but the whole system would. So yes, when I say vendor neutral, those data collection points, they could be firewalls, intrusion detectors. They're going to come into that same database, but the profiling portion of that database was just one slice. Uh, okay, one more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No. We will not be selling this database, we will not be selling hits. We're going to hope if we I think as, as long as this, the site doesn't get too big, I mean like mega hits and bandwidth and stuff, we'll be okay. If it, if it starts to get bigger, um, we're going to have to seek um, uh, you know, financing or sponsorship. That will be our first avenue. We will not resort to selling this name. We'll shut the product down before we start selling this as marketing. And we've actually had that prominently on our, on our web page at the top. Okay, this is this is in the phase three now. Once we've refined our internal logic and proved to ourselves this is a viable go forward strategy, meaning that if I spend the next six months on it, I'm not going to lose my house, that there'll be some reward at the end, and, and that's just the way it is, guys. I'm you know it's reality. Um, if if it is viable, then what we will do is we will open that database up to people that are using their own objects. So you will be able to do your own queries against the database. And you, you, may, you can maintain your logic in-house, or if you want other people to be able to use it, you could post it to our web page. And maybe you can create something that can, you know, keep you from having to go to work at nine and wearing a suit. All right, I really appreciate you sticking around. I know it's kind of been hot. It's actually a lot cooler in here now, though. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on, but it sounds like there's some music. I know there's some pools out there and uh, some cold ones waiting. So uh, anybody who wants to talk to us offline, fine. Um, we have these little uh, the flyers. We have some flyers here with the web pages. Feel free to get them. Come by and see us at the booth tomorrow. And um, again, thanks for your time.